Hi there. Uh, welcome to Sangoma series on working from home, working remotely. Uh, in this session, we're going to be talking about find me, uh, fo uh, follow me, and forwarding. Uh, two very useful functions uh, for being able to provide remote workers the ability to uh, work as efficiently as possible. So, follow me is the ability to ring any phone number for an extension when no one's at the physical extension. So. Uh, I'm at, I have an extension, uh, somebody calls in, uh, but I'm not at my physical extension. And so then I want to have that uh, call rerouted to an additional number or numbers uh, so that it could try and reach me. Uh, it's different than forwarding a call. The calls remain in the system. Uh, so for instance, I might set it up to ring my uh, extension for a certain period of time and then afterwards it might ring my cell phone for a certain period of time if it if I don't answer the phone call uh, the system itself will answer this the phone call and put the caller into voicemail so that keeps the the phone call within the system when working remote uh, you face a lot of different challenges uh, users may not have their actual physical phone uh, even when an extension is physically available uh, the users may not physically be next to it, right? So you might be using a soft phone client. Uh, maybe you have childcare, which takes you away from your desk uh, that you have set up in your remote office. Uh, perhaps you have older care issues. Uh, whatever the case may be, you might not. You're traditionally not as rooted at your desk as you are in a traditional office setting. So having a follow me set up uh, is very useful, being able to be reached. Uh, even if you've stepped away for a little bit of teary time. For most common uses, uh, the most commonly used follow me is to have a person uh, reach you uh, via your cell phone without having to actually provide that cell phone number to the users, right? So you don't want to go through the thing, the whole hassle of, hey, call me, call me on this number as opposed to my standard traditional number that they've always called me on. Right, so all your customers, all the people you interact with, they know your extension, they know your work phone number. Have the system actually do the work of trying to find your uh, the next number that you could be reached at, as opposed to trying to provide all sorts of different numbers uh, to customers uh, and and coworkers. So we have to pare this down into two steps. Uh, the first is, how do you actually administer to set up for Follow Me? And then from a user perspective, how do I actually go and set the phone numbers that I want? All right. So administration of Follow Me. There are two paths that you have as the administrator of a PBX, PBX Act system. The first one is that you gather the information uh, from your users and you say hey give me your phone number that you want to be reached at since nobody's working in the office or you're a remote worker I will set it up for you if you're going to do that you would do that in the extensions that's a lot of burden on the administrator it's easier to have the users be able to define and control and enable and disable follow me for any of the cases. Uh, they might be remote working uh, for a period of time in one location. Perhaps they go to a different location, they have a different number that they want to do. As opposed to having the administrator have the burden of setting all that up for the users, you can enable follow me in the user control panel. And then the users themselves have the ability to manage that. Now, you do have to set up access as the administrator. You do have to set up access so that they can actually get to uh, the user control panel. But assuming that you've done that, um, you'll be able to ha have the users control their own phone numbers and you won't have to deal with that uh, constant barrage of, of setting up and you know changing phone numbers for, for users. So let's look at that from an administrator perspective, how that looks like, right? So I am in my PBX modules. I'm going to click on the button. I'm going to log out and walk you through from the, from the actual login in perspective. All right, so here I am at my PBX. I'm going to log in. In my case, I'm the administrator. Again, 
So I, as I mentioned, I can actually, as the administrator, set up on an individual use basis, individual extension basis, the phone number that I want to set for a particular user, right? So in that event, I would go to extensions. This is me setting up an individual extension for Find Me, Follow Me. I get to my list of extensions. I click on the extension that I want to set the Follow Me number for. And I have a tab for Find Me, Follow Me. The user provides me the phone number. I input that into the Follow Me list. I set different rules. By default, our rules are that we're going to uh, ring an extension for seven seconds uh, and then try the rest of the follow me list for 20 seconds a piece, right? So in this particular instance, I'm gonna ring my extension. This extension is 4,000. If I can't ring that phone number, it, if, that answer, if that phone number doesn't answer, either be a voicemail or actual human interaction, uh, it's going to ring the next phone number in the list. The phone numbers in the list, if they are outside of the system, you want to put a pound sign at the end that's a notification to the system that the phone number is outside of the actual system. And so it should try some of the outbound routes, right? So we're not going to go into that. Now, this is me setting up an individual extension. I find that uh, very burdensome. Uh, so the administrator would have to do that uh, for every extension in the system. So now somebody at extension 4001 has a different phone number. I have to click on that person, put in their phone number. So you could do it that way if you want to have that control as an administrator, uh, but it's probably best if you enable the user control panel so that the users themselves can actually uh, choose those those settings and phone numbers and be able to do it when they need to. Enable, disable, change phone numbers uh, as they see. Now, those are some of the things that they might be able to do if they actually have their physical phone uh, in their remote office or while they're working at home, uh, they might be able to do that through the BLF keys that they might have on their phone. But the user control panel also allows access for users so that they could do it individually without the need of the uh, administrator getting involved. To do that, you would go to user management. Now, in this particular instance, I can again choose to, on the individual user extension, uh, user per, per user level, change the find me and follow me rules for that person. It's typically easier if you have groups of workers that you can assign extensions to. In this particular instance, I have two groups. One is all users, right? So that's all the extensions that are in my, um, my directory. Uh, the second is a group that I created called remote users. Now, I didn't actually have this uh, group created before this uh, little session. Uh, so what you would do if you didn't have a remote users group is you would just simply create using uh, the user management add group, and then you would put the, the extensions that you want. Once I've clicked on add group, I would create the remote users group, and I put the extensions that I want to control be controlled by these set of rules into that group, right? So in this first instance, I have a, a, a ton of extensions, but I've only got three people or extensions in this remote users group. It could be more, it could be all, right? So maybe I just need to set this at the all users level. Um, these are all things that you have to decide how you want to manage it, um, you know, so that you can say, okay, these people are working remote now. Subsequently, later on, I want to take those permissions away and I can remove them from the group. Once I've got the group of remote users, I'm going to want to give them access to the user control panel. So I click on my group uh, and I'm going to click on UCP, right? Now there's two things that I've, I have to do. The first thing I have to do is make sure that they have access to UCP, right? So I create this group and I want to make sure that allow login into the UCP, the user control panel, is set so that the users can log in. If they're unfamiliar with the user control panel, you want to make sure that the tour mode is enabled. This will give them uh, tips and, and, and tutorials on how to actually control the UCP, how to add widgets. Very helpful to a first time user who's not familiar with the UCP. Once I've done all those things, you'll notice that there's a lot of different other things that I can add to 
the user so that they have different access to different functions. Uh, for instance, maybe I want them to be able to access voicemail, right? So maybe I don't, maybe they don't have voicemail. Uh, they don't have their phone. They don't want to dial into the system. They can use the web and they use the control panel to access voicemail uh, if they want. There's other things they can set up bridges. Uh, they're, they can look at different queues. Uh, they could have call history uh, available to them if they want to look at that. These are all things that we're, we're going to go into uh, when we, we show the user side. But if you want to check out more things in our uh, about the UCP, you could check out our session on the UCP in our working from home, uh, working remote series. All right. So in this particular instance, I'm going to set up these users for follow me. This user is in the group of remote users, and I enable it, and I enable follow me, and I enable the ring strategy sessions, All right? Then I would hit submit, and I would hit apply, and then at that point, the users will be able to log on to the user control panel and change their settings themselves. So I am going to walk through what it looks like from a user configuration standpoint. So what does follow me look like from a, a user per standpoint? Depends on your situation. So now I'm a user, right? So I'm not the administrator. I'm assuming that my administrator has set things up so that I can uh, actually have the functionality for follow me it could have been uh, that my administrator wanted my phone number and he set it up for me or he's going to give me details on how to control uh, connect to the user control panel and actually enter the information myself if I'm within the user control panel I could turn on and turn off follow me uh, if I am with, within Zulu, let's say I have a soft client, I can turn it on and off using a feature code. The default is uh, star 21. If I actually have my physical phone, I could turn that on and off using a BLF key that might be enabled. Uh, but of course, you can always set it from the UCP itself. All right, so let's log in to the UCP and see what that looks like. So I've uh, been previously logged in, and I'm going to log myself out. All right, so here I am at the credentials that my, my uh, administrator has passed on to me to log into the user control panel. I click on login. Now, in this particular instance, I have um, widgets set up already previously, but I want to walk you through what it looks like to add the web widgets. I have currently a widget. These things, these blocks, are called widgets. To add widgets, if uh, your administrator has turned on and you're not familiar with the user control panel, uh, you might get a tutorial. It'll walk you through all the various buttons that are associated with the user control panel, the UCP. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm going to add a widget by hitting the plus sign. You'll see the different widgets that I could actually set up. In my particular instance, I want to set up follow me. So I'm going to click on follow me, and then I will see that I have a plus sign to actually add that widget to my dashboard. Poof, and then it pops up. And I can resize it, right? And so I can say, now in this particular instance, I've had follow me set up. I've been working remote, so I, I don't have to uh, set it up at all. Um, I'm going to set my settings. I will show you the settings. So by default, this will be disabled for you. Uh, or if, he's been, if it's been set at the uh, system level, it'll be enabled. But if I want to actually set the phone numbers that I want to reach, I want to click on the little gear that's actually going to give me the phone numbers that I want to try. So I see here that I have a follow me list, and this is my cell phone number. 
that I'm going to actually try and reach uh, if I'm not at my extension. So I typically sit at my desk um, and I have my physical phone. Sometimes I will work out of the office and I'll use my Zulu client, right? But sometimes I walk away if I'm out of my out of my traditional office setting. Uh, I walk away from my computer and I want it to be able to ring my cell phone number. So I put my cell phone number in my follow me list, right? So one thing I have to remember though is if I'm actually using a real phone number that's outside of the system, I have to end the phone number with a pound sign. That lets the system know, hey, the number that this is trying to reach is outside of the system and it's gonna use different routing logic to reach you uh, than it would traditionally use if you don't use that uh, phone number. This could be any set of phone numbers, any number of phone numbers. I could add different numbers. In this instance, I'm going to say, hey, if I'm not at that phone number, continue to try and reach me at a different phone number. That seems a bit much, um, you know, from a caller perspective. Each time uh, that you add phone numbers to your follow me list, it's more time that they're basically hearing ringing. Right, so there's only a certain amount of time that a, a customer or a colleague is going to try to ring your extension, um, and you don't want to make your list too too long, uh, because if they if you don't answer, then they're on the line and they never actually get to the point where they can leave voicemail. Right, so one of the key things with the follow me functionality is that this is going to use your system voicemail. Right, so it's going to try your extension, uh, which may be your Zulu client because you're working at home. You've walked away from your desk. It's going to ring your cell phone, right? But you don't want them to reach your cell phone voicemail because that's confusing, right? They've called your uh, work number and then all of a sudden they get a totally different greeting, right? My, my greeting from uh, for work is very different than my greeting for my mobile, my mobile phone, right? So I don't want to have someone who's used to getting... Hi, this is David Bridges of Sangoma Technologies. Please leave a message. To all of a sudden getting a voicemail from my uh, cell phone provider, that's very different, right? So you got to make sure that you don't leave the caller hanging, and you also want to make sure that your ring cycles are slightly less than the amount of ring cycles that would take to reach your cell phone voicemail, right? That way it keeps the voicemail of someone trying to leave you a message uh, in within your system. Then you can retrieve your voicemail through your standard means. Uh, the other thing that you want to do is after you've you've set this up, you are providing to colleagues and callers and customers uh, just your standard phone number, right? So you don't get into a situation when you're using the follow me functionality of having to provide, oh, call me at this phone number or call me at this phone number. Nope. You use your same standard work number that you've always provided to customers and users and other users and when they're they'll not know that it's trying your cell phone number um but if it doesn't reach you on your cell phone number then it'll dump them into your standard voicemail right so the fall me is a little bit different than forwarding right so i want to go show a little bit about forwarding if you are doing a forwarding remember that forwarding is different right so if you're forwarding the phone number it's it's leaving the system at that point, right? So it's leaving your extension and going off to a, a different phone number. Maybe that is your cell phone number. So if I if I've set up forwarding as opposed to follow me, uh, and my forwarding number is my cell phone number, they absolutely are going to get your cell phone number voicemail if they if you don't actually answer it, right? So that's a different in semantics. I personally prefer to use follow me so that they remain within my confines of my system from a voicemail notification standpoint. If I wanted to set up forwarding, you know, these are pretty standard functions that most folks are used to. Uh, I have three different options. I can set up forwarding that's unconditional, which means every time anybody calls in, it's always going to get forwarded to a phone number. I could set it up if I'm actually on the line. Uh, or all the lines that I have available, then only then will it forward to a, a different number. Um, and then subsequently, if I've marked myself as unavailable, then it can use the forwarding number. Right? So that's a little bit different than your follow me functionality, which is going to ring through to different phone numbers that you've assigned. These are based on conditions 
uh, and we'll always use that number. And then whatever terminates, however that phone call terminates, whether it be a voicemail or something, uh, that's how you're going to, uh, where you end up uh, being, putting the caller. Uh, you can configure that um, using the BLFs that you might have on your phone if you've been able to bring your phone home. Uh, or you can manually control control it via the user control panel. You add the widget. Uh, or you can configure it using feature codes. The standard feature codes are listed here. Uh, check with your administrator to make sure that these have not been changed, right? So these are the standard uh, feature codes, default feature codes, uh, that allow you to toggle on, toggle off, call forwarding from a phone within the system. Uh, you could do this via uh, Zulu. You could do this via your phone. Uh, but, of course, if you have VLF keys, you can use that as well. So let's look at what we would have done if we uh, were trying to do this uh, forwarding via the UCP. So I've logged into my UCP. And I want to make sure that I have the widget for call forwarding, All right? So I select call forwarding. I hit my plus sign. That pops up my widget. Now, if I want to set up unconditional forwarding, I, I go from disabled to enabled. It's going to ask me for the phone number that I want to forward to. I'll input that in. I will hit the pound sign to let them know that this particular phone number is not within the system. I will hit save. At this point, I've done forwarding so that it rings this phone number unconditionally. I could have set it up so that if it were based on my unavailability or my busy status, uh, but right now this is a hard forward, right? Calls come in, goes to this phone number. Very different than a follow me, which is calls come in, rings the extension, then tries the next number. If it can't reach you on the next number, then it puts you back in this voicemail. If this were to complete to a voicemail, it would be the voicemail of whatever this number is. So given the choice, I typically work in a follow me uh, fashion uh, so that uh, users are always uh, given my corporate e uh, voicemail system as opposed to any phone number that I might afford my number to um, and getting that voicemail system. So that's really how you set up uh, follow me or forwarding within the system as a user. Again, as an administrator as well. Look for other topics. We have a bunch of different things on our series for working from home, working remote. Helpful in these times. Uh, thank you very much.